Hello, welcome back. Today I'm going to introduce you to some of the visualization and mapping tools that we'll be using for the rest of the class and to visualize some of the data that we've been downloading from the internet. So traditionally, spatial-based visualization or mapping was always done in standalone software programs like GIS, which were great for analysis and to visualize the data and to map it on the world, but the product of that visualization was always stuck within the program or through static images, which you can save and print, uh, but would not allow the user to interact with your data. And lately, through some advances in online technology, uh, there's been a lot of uh, opportunities with online-based mapping and visualization, which actually give a degree of freedom and interaction to the user uh, to interact with their data. So here's one example of such a project. This is uh, a project looking at check-in information for Beijing uh, by the Civic Data Design Project at MIT. And as I interact with this map, you'll notice a few things. One is that um, I'm able to interact with the data. So I see some display, but I can also scroll over and look at the actual data of each point. You'll also notice that what is shown changes at every scale. So if I keep zooming in, all the scale of the data points and the roads changes. And this is to do with the technology that allows this kind of mapping to happen, which is based on tiles. So these kind of maps support a, a set range of zoom levels. And at each zoom level, there's a set of image files, uh, which are tiled, which load uh, at each time that you zoom in and out. So at this level, there's a separate kind of collection of tile images that load up automatically when you go to that zoom level. As I zoom in, you can see those tiles loading. And this technology is the same that's used by Google and other uh, online mapping tools. And it's, at this point, deemed the most sort of efficient way to display interactive online maps. And that's the technology that we'll be using to create our uh, dynamic online maps. Um, the problem is because it's sort of a new technology, there's actually a lot of ways to make this happen. And to do it uh, at, the, at the basic level requires knowledge of JavaScript, which is pretty much the standard programming language uh, of the internet. Um, but there's actually a lot of free online tools that try to make this process a bit easier. So we're going to start with using some of these tools to create very quick sort of uh, online visualizations of our data and then introduce you to some a uh, bit more advanced tools that allow more customization. So here I've put together a kind of map of the ecology of WebGIS just to show you what uh, some of these tools are and how they relate to creating online uh, based interactive maps. So at the top here you'll see the results, all of which are a web map. And these are some of the processes of how to get from your table data, which right now we've been downloading. So this is some kind of information about data points with geographic references and how to get to each of these web maps. As, and as you go up, uh, the difficulty increases, but also you get a lot more chance for customization. So the first way we're going to explore is a tool called CardoDB. It's an online mapping tool, which includes a lot of base maps. So you can get Google-like base maps of the world. And then you can actually, within their online interface, plot uh, the points directly on that map. So that's a very easy way. It's all online. You don't need to download any software. And it's an easy way to get your data onto an interactive map. The second way we're going to explore is if we want to do some kind of processing to the data, um, we're going to explore a way to go from your data into QGIS, which is an open source GIS software, which will allow you to process the data and produce either new shape files, which are geographic vector-based files, or uh, raster analysis files, which are sort of images. And then bringing those new data sets into TileMill, which is an open source software created by Mapbox uh, to basically build maps offline create these map files, and then import those map files into Mapbox, which is also an online mapping software, which can integrate your data, whether it's point data, shape files, or uh, geo image files, with its own base maps, and also publish those online. 
And the third method, which we won't cover uh, this week, but we'll, we'll cover uh, in the future, is getting more customizable and complex um, using actual uh, JavaScript, and in this case, d3.js, which is uh, open source uh, JavaScript library, which makes it easier to perform certain visualization tasks. So even though D3 makes some tasks easier, it's still more complex than using some of these integrated online mapping tools like Cardo DB and Mapbox. Some of the advantage of these early, uh, of these more basic workflows is that it's very easy. Um, it doesn't require you to know any new programming languages. And it's very easy to get your maps online. Some of the disadvantages are there's certain trade-offs in terms of customizability. Uh, also, both of these services are subscription services. They include a free option, which will be enough for our purposes, um, but they do have limits on how much data and how much traffic uh, those maps can support. Whereas if you go through the fully customizable route, like JavaScript or D3, um, there's no limits. You can host them yourself, and there's no limits to how those maps can be used.